There's a basket for Smaragda in the warehouse. She's waiting. What does it mean to be truly righteous? To never succumb to temptation, or to take a vow of chastity despite constant temptation? Our heroine did not know the answer to this question, and preferred never to dwell on it. If it were up to her, she would have chosen the quiet life of a nun. However, destiny had something different in store for her. For the sake of the prayers of all the... The sisters loved Indica. Christian love is known to be patient, merciful, and faithful. However, in a lowly human sense, they didn't love her that much. To be completely honest, they didn't love her at all. Many of them felt nothing but disgust for her. Indica, however, was not to blame. Were it not for the voice that was inculcating ideas in her, unforgivable for a Christian, she would have been a virtuous and rather mediocre nun. Indica's biggest dream was for that voice to leave her alone once and for all. Her entire life became a struggle, a painful resistance. No matter how hard she tried, no matter how much she tortured herself, the voice grew louder and more convincing every day. Sisters, today I was walking, forgive me, through the refectory. And I saw the servant of God holding a life of fashion bearer of her in a bathos. So I went up to her, quickly made the sign of the cross, and I did. God grant you patience, mother.
Useless labor is the basis of spiritual development. Obedience is above fasting or prayers. Indica didn't understand why she needed to retrieve the water from the well if there was a pump next door that took it from a sacred spring. She didn't understand why drinking from the spring was allowed, but cooking soup was a sin. The well was only about 15 meters away from the spring. It was not possible to have any other water there. Even a tenth of it is the same. They say, on Epiphany, even a drop of holy water blesses an entire canister. If that were true, a couple of evaporated drops from the spring would bless the puddles beneath her. We haven't eaten even ten of them. We've got What's in it? What's in it? 
what's in it. What's in it? the key. Oh, what an imbecile. Indica loved Tihon. Imbecile was a medical diagnosis, so she was just using the word literally. In any case, Tihon couldn't hear her. Hypocrisy isn't really a virtue, is it? It was as if the convent didn't want to let her go. Even though she knew there was no place closer to God, she yearned to leave it, at least for a short time. Not true! I think deep inside she... Smaragda's tasteless can... ...that even incense could not cover. Half of the sisters couldn't even read. Even if the abbess was literate, she surely didn't go out of her way to use them. I is the protocol I have sent before thee, O merciful father. Receive me a benedict. of respect for his dying wish, or for the size of his epaulets. What do you think? Hold on. Wait! Quiet. Stop yelling. You've saved me. And I, I... I've saved someone too. Poor girl. A little more and she could have... 
Lord, Lord have mercy on for us. And you didn't see. She got away. Well, well, I, did, I didn't. I don't know how much, but if it weren't for me, God deliver us in this room. Sorry, w what is your name? Ilya. Indica. You know, they say that every hour that a patient doesn't get medical attention, their chance of survival is halved. Crazy thing to say, to be honest. It makes no sense to generalize like that. Do we? so much sorry we're doing no more than five verse an hour though whoa, whoa, whoa. how do you understand it huh is he talking about the word versed or how to start an engine I grew up in a bike shop my father sold them in Spasov why in Spasov no in Godadishi I've never been to Spasov that's where I grew up <laughs> the man's logic is flawless. Uh, are you embarrassed to be so close to a man? She's been waiting for that. He's quite a looker, huh? Thick boy. Oh, that must smell awful. You know, they, they kept us in the train for three days. Oh, don't worry. <laughs> she likes it. Whoa! Pretending. He's just like the men you imagine in your room when you're... Enough! All right, c calm down. Is he a bandit or a sissy? Hold on to your seat, for God's sake.
What do you mean you talk to God? What? Oh, my arm. You've seen my arm, yes? It's been a week or more. I doubt it. And what does God have to do with this? Well, let, let me explain. Ever since that night, everything, every event, it all happened as I was told it would. I, I'm certain I was the only one who left that train alive. It's all going according to plan. Every fucking step is God's plan, do you understand? So taking me hostage was God's plan? I know what you're thinking. But remember the Gospel. The father who gave his money to the prodigal son, not to the beloved one. The good one. But to the bandit. He who had been murdering and stealing, but came back. He came back. Do you understand? I think the Lord is happier to see to see one repentant sinner than well, a hundred thousand righteous people. I don't know. I, they don't even need repentance. Do, do, do you hear me? You know, he, he laid everything out before me. Spread out like a deck of cards. The past, the present, the future. Who? God, who else? I was lying there, about to die. And a sister, just like you, brought me some water in this mug. And I was drinking and I saw... I saw ripples in the water, little round waves, and heard a whisper, so I drank, and... You heard God in a cup? In a cup, yes. But that's, that's not the point. I'll show you when we get there. Maybe there's something in that shed. I've missed the smell. A wrench. Give it to me. It wasn't a coincidence, and now Indica realized it too. She had heard about the Kudyats and its miracles, but right now, it's Spasov and Ilya. Meeting a prisoner who talks to God would not be an everyday occurrence. Also, Indica took a liking to him. Who, this one? <laughs> no. One way or another, there was certainly no doubt that she had to head for Spasov, and not the Danilov Monastery. The letter. I cannot neglect my duty. What if there's something important in it? Open it. See for yourself. No. Reading someone else's letter is a greater sin than not delivering it. Greater? How much greater? Twice as much. I don't know. Interesting. So, not delivering two letters is the same as reading one. 
What about stealing? Pocketing a ruble, for example. Is that worse? Worse. How much worse? This is nonsense. You can't compare such things. Why not? The priest imposes a different penance for different sins, and since you know for sure which is better or worse, there has to be a way of measuring. Then let us say that stealing is ten times worse than not delivering a letter. What about murder? Let us put that at a thousand letters. That would mean that if a postman were to lose a sack full of letters, we'd have a murderer. Although, maybe there should be a bulk discount. <laughs> what about a rapist? A rapist is better than a murderer, right? You are not scared. I just thought that. As a disciple of the Lord, I just want them. You don't even have anything to say! I'm but I beseech thee, O Lord, for out upon Where's the dog? Good question. I haven't heard it for a while. Listen, I'll help you get to Spasov. Somehow, Indica was convinced that the Kudyets was going to solve all of her problems. That soon the voice in her head would disappear, and she would return to the monastery as someone who deserves at least forgiveness, if not everyone's love. She thought that years of suffering had been leading her up to this exact moment. There should be a station behind the windmill. Won't work with me. Wrong uh, way. I won't make it. Hold on. We'll think of something. Dumb bitch. Why are you standing around? How long can dogs stay underwater, huh? I don't know. I'd wait for a couple of hours, just to be sure. How beautiful. We had this one artist in the clink. He drew his family on the wall with his own shit. They looked so lifelike. What? He was like that. Didn't manage to finish the drawing of the daughter, though. Le left her with just one eye. He got stabbed. Because of the stench? He was drawing on the wall outside. It was minus 30 degrees. Shit doesn't really stink when it's cold. He got stabbed. The elevator. Here's the gearing. Sanitary gear set. By, by blocking one of the wheels, you can... It works.
Finally, the station. Does a does a dog have a soul? Dogs adore their masters. Is that even possible without a soul? Does one need a soul to feel love? Is it possible to love without a body? What remains if you deprive a dog of a body? How can it love something it can't hear or sniff? How can it remember someone it loves if it loses its brain with its memories? In a world without bones, cold, procreation, beautiful women, rich men, bodies, basically, passion, kindness, love. Can any of it exist without the body? For a dog. What? Ah, uh, yes, F for a dog. Crane could move it. If this thing still works, it's a miracle. How can I detach the load? Gotta figure it out. Why figure it out? It works anyway, right? Look, there's a platform from the other side. Wait, when's the next train? What if it's tomorrow? The station must have the schedule. What's the point? I, I don't think it's gonna stop here. So what do we do? Have you read Mark Twain? Tom Sawyer? Yes. So... I like it. Me too.
So the monastery. So the monastery. So the monastery wasn't your choice. So the monastery wasn't your choice. It was. <laughs> when your decision has a reason, is it really a choice? W when a brook hits a rock, does it choose which way to go? Free will. Choices. But whenever we make a choice, don't we base it on our previous experience? Don't we estimate all the possible benefits in our head? If we go against the rational, don't we realize that we're being driven by our emotions, by our passions? Do you understand? As I was saying, the world helps us to control our passions. That's true. But when you control your emotions, there's always a reason, right? You can explain why you're doing it, build a string of logic. Ask him if he knows what a soul even is. Everyone says soul this, soul that, but can anyone clearly explain what it is? Yes, but even a soul has its own inclinations. But let's say your soul gravitates towards God, and mine doesn't. Is that my choice then? Or, in theory, let, let's imagine that the choice isn't based on anything. What kind of choice is it then? Pure chance. Wait, so, so you're saying choice is an empty word? Maybe it is. I don't know. I don't even understand the point of this whole choice thing, this freedom that God has graced us with. Why would God need our so-called freedom if in the end he's only satisfied with strictly defined choices? He could have just made me in a way he would have liked me. I don't know. Never seen those before. Here's what I think. If I were the Tsar, 
I, I wouldn't want my wife to be a slave. I, I would find myself a free girl that could love me genuinely. Do you, do you understand? Yes, it's a good example. But now imagine if your czar has found himself a girl he loves. Can you? So? So he confesses his feelings to her and invites her to his palace. So? And now imagine that the czar also says, if you come, I'll drape you in gold. And if you don't, I'll hang you on a hook and burn you slowly. This also requires her to return his feelings. I see where you're going with this. But it's not God who burns people in hell. That would be those damn demons, enemies of mankind. Very well. In this case, the Tsar says, if you come, I'll cover you in gold. And if you don't, Parfum the Butcher will catch you, hang you on a hook, and burn you slowly. I love you endlessly, but can't do anything about it. Think about it. If even the Tsar can't actually do anything about this Butcher because of some unclear circumstances, why can't he just stay silent? So you're saying nobody can love God genuinely? No. No, it's not like that. Check one place before the line. Where? You'll see. I've hidden something there. All right. Exactly. We have to go over there. We can climb on those cans. You, you can control this thing too. It's not that complicated. You'll see. Are we even allowed here? Nobody here. Everyone's asleep. is ours.
the first time since meeting Ilya, Indica felt a stab of doubt. What if she had made a mistake? What if she had done something wrong? What if the Kudets wouldn't work? Why was every step on her road to God drawing her closer to the devil? I did everything correctly. Otherwise he would have died from sepsis. And if he didn't? There! He's healed! A miracle! Wouldn't feel good, would it? That means he was indeed talking to God and earned his absolution. God, please. Talk to me this one time. How did I go against you? Is it in my power to intervene in your design? This is a part of your plan. This is how it's supposed to be. You will be alright. The arm will heal. Ilya will live. So now I have to feel guilt for this as well? You can see I'm trying. But he's always behind my shoulder. Me again. You were driven by fear. The fear of ending up with a corpse. And back then, with the gypsy, what was it? Were you restless because of his tanned arms? Temple of John of Damascus. The one from the poster was towering over Indica. She was consumed by anxiety more and more. What if she was left? What if they realized who she was and wouldn't let her in? What if she was not worthy of a miracle? Maybe one needed to buy a ticket to see the miracle, and all the tickets had sold out. What if her certainty in God's plan was just another delusion, a temptation she so faint-heartedly succumbed to? Like it. The prioress cut it as punishment. It wasn't a big deal. I burned Father Sergei's Felonian.
Look, that's our cathedral from the poster. Says. What? Look, that's our cathedral from the poster. Is. What? The tavern you were talking about. There it is, below. Yeah. By the way, see the pawn shop opposite the tavern? Its owner is Nam Pat, Ephraim's brother. They've always hated each other, and yet depended on each other. Nam was buying stolen stuff from the vagrants, who would then go to Ephraim to spend the money on shitty wine and whores. And Ephraim Spoons would often end up in Nam's shop. We used to call them the Batshit Brothers. Why don't they like each other? Because each of them thinks that the other brother is richer. Soon you'll be able to play a concert there again. I want to see it, yes? Get me down! Shit, it's not finished.
a strong hope in thee. Implore thy son that he may place me on his right hand, unworthy as I am when he sits to judge the living and the dead. Amen. Ever heard of Makar, the Scytheman? There was a lot about him in the papers, but only after he was hanged. Seven kids lost their heads because of his side. What? Well, he chopped them off. Are you comparing him to me? Well, no. No, I think Makar is something of a saint. Listen, let me tell you. Makar had three kids, all of them boys. One day, he dropped something on his youngest, a wagon or a wardrobe or something. It was so bad that the poor boy stopped feeding his legs. Couldn't sleep at night. Lay there all day crying from pain. The village doctor couldn't do anything, so Macar couldn't take it anymore. He went to the priest and said, Bless me, Father, to end the child's suffering. Well, the priest didn't bless him, of course. He sent him home to pray and think about the salvation of his soul. Makar prayed for a week, but the sun wouldn't stop screaming. So, Makar snapped, took the cover off his side, said a prayer, and then did the suffering with a single sweep. He went back to the priest and said, It's done, Father. I don't have a soul anymore. I lost my right to think about salvation back when I dropped that wardrobe on my son. Or was it a wagon? I don't remember. So, my soul is done. Better tell me where he is now, in hell or in heaven. The priest said, in heaven, of course. He didn't get to sin. In a way, you gave him a gift. Sent him straight to the kingdom of heaven without any earthly suffering. Well, this thought got stuck in Makar's head. So he went home, put his other sons in front of a kiosk, said a prayer with them, and chopped their heads off. But after that, he went completely insane and started hunting down his neighbor's kids. Managed to kill four of them before he got caught. Why is he a saint? Think of it this way. Some martyr gets burned at the stake because of Christ. Does it mean he buys himself eternal life for ten minutes of suffering? Hmm? Can we call this a real sacrifice? Makar is a different story. To save someone else's soul, he sacrificed his own. Why are you telling me all this? Father Proc, the one you killed. He couldn't have asked for a better gift. He's now an innocent victim, a martyr. Maybe he'll even be canonized. And what about Makar? What about him? He got hanged. Where is the cadet? Mm, never heard of it. Someone just exchanged it for a trumpet. A, a man with one arm. Oh, you are extremely lucky. This is exactly what you're looking for. An amazing artifact of unspeakable wondrous power. Just 25 rubles. 
What do you mean, 25? You got it for five. Mm. 20 for everything. Whoa, One whoa, second, whoa, whoa. I just need to have a look. You can look, but, but don't touch. What? What did you sell me, you scumbag? Oh, damn. Oh, oh no. It, it doesn't even fucking you work. puking it or something. God. Get your ass out of here. Go off me. Excuse me. Push up.